What were your expectations up until the day the Suns let you go? It was abrupt for me too, Rachel. Uh, you know, three <laughs> games into the preseason, um, you know, had I known how it was going to go, we probably would have scheduled more Australian teams in the preseason. Right. Than <laughs> the so, um, but no, it, it was it was unexpected. But you know, as you know, as a head coach or general manager in this league, you can get fired at any time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's certain times on the calendar where it may be more expected. Sure. Uh, you know, after a tough season, you know, in the off season times like that, but. Um, you know, we went through the process and, and hired a head coach, and Igor Kokoshkov, and uh, ran the draft and in free agency and made a few trades and uh, basically got things set. So the timing of it was a little bit surprising, but, uh, you know, I was there for five and a half years, and I appreciate everything Mr. Sarver and the Suns did for me. Ryan, you came from Boston, which is a team with very stable ownership. And, you know, Danny's been there forever, uh, and before Brad, Doc had been there forever, and Brad now looks like he's going to be there forever. And you come to Phoenix where it's a revolving door and... and Ownership is anything but stable. Can you compare and contrast for us what that experience was like going from Boston to going to Phoenix? Yeah, they're very different, I mean, and, and that doesn't mean one's better than the other. They're, they're just different. Uh, as you mentioned, Danny Ainge. No, one's better Boston. than the other. Come on. That's not, we're not pulling punches. One's definitely better than the other. Well, they both paid me, so I love both of them. Uh, but, uh, you know, ha having been with the Celtics for 10-plus years, uh, I think we had one coach for the majority of that time in Doc Rivers. And uh, a few months after I left to go to the Suns, they hired Brad Stevens, and looks like he'll be there a while. Um, so I, I think that's what every organization is striving for, that organizational stability. Uh, that starts at the top, obviously, with ownership. And and trickles down to the front office and the coaching staff and, and the players. Um, so, you know, they, they are different. Uh, there has been a lot of turnover in Phoenix. Um, but again, for me, you know, Mr. Sarver is great. He gave me a great opportunity, and uh, I tried to take, take advantage of it. I mean, there's all sorts, sorts of stories comes out when a major change is made like this, especially when it's, you were in the room when you got fired, so I can ask someone who was in the room, what did they tell you? What was the reason they gave you? Well, I, I probably don't want to go into specifics of, of the call, Rachel. It was, um, as I mentioned, after our third preseason game. It was and, over the phone? Uh, yeah. Um, and for me, you know, it was a little bit surprising or a little bit frustrating. And look, I, I get, you know, that any head coach or general manager has been fired said, if I only had more time, yeah. I would have done this and that. Um, but, you know, I, I viewed the roster as not fully completed. Mm -hmm. And we were working on a few uh, trades to upgrade the team. And, I, you know, I, I guess I thought we had more time than I ended up having. Um, so, you know, just the timing of it, like I said, was surprising. Um, but, you know, Robert thought it was best. And I was there five plus years. And again, I appreciate the opportunity he gave me. So you guys, have, you guys tried to play in the free agent game a little bit. A couple had a couple of high-profile free agents in. Um, you had to hire some coaches with this last offseason. You you interviewed a lot of guys before you settled on Igor. Um, even though it's, Phoenix is a great city with a great tax situation, that's been attractive. Do, do the Suns, because of their, you know, their history recently, do they start behind the eight ball a little bit when going to coaches and going to free agents to to bring them there? Well, I think, you know, each organization has challenges. Um, Phoenix is a great place to live, as Amin knows, as well as anybody. It's a great place to play. Um, the team is super young, so I, I think that hurt us somewhat in terms of recruiting elite free agents in their prime. Um, you know, and the two foundational pieces that uh, we left there are uh, 22 years old with Devin Booker and, and, and 20 uh, and DeAndre Ayton. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, free agents, especially veteran free agents like LeBron James or LaMarcus Aldridge, uh, look at it and say they're, they're a little ways away. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is a challenge. You know, there, there are unique challenges to every setup, every situation. Uh, the Suns, as I mean, knows, have been a destination franchise in the past, and I think and hope as, as Devin and DeAndre and the rest of the young players improve, they will be again in the future. And you are the guy. You are the guy who drafted Devin Booker at number 13. You got great compensation for Goran Dragic when he wanted to leave. On the other hand, Goran Dragic wanted to leave. There was that three-point guard situation you had for a while that nobody could really understand why you had created that. And then the no-point guard situation, it felt like, going into the summer. What, what is your biggest regret you have in all of your time as a Sun GM? Well, if I did it again, I'd probably have one and a half point guards. That seems like the happy medium, you know. Uh, but uh, no, the, the biggest regret, Rachel, I, I think is that how public some of the conflicts with the players became. And I, I think, you know, as, as Amin alluded to earlier, the, the good organizations um, in terms of, you know, historically handle that behind closed doors. And that's not a shot at Phoenix, and that's, that's mm -hmm. more of a shot at me than anything. Um, you know, we could have done better internally uh, from ownership in the front office and our coaching staff uh, in terms of communication with the players and vice versa. So um, if I do jump back in on the team side at some point, I'll learn from that. And I've been doing a lot of reflecting over the last couple of weeks and just thinking of how we can do better in that area going forward. And look, you did draft poker, DeAndre Ayton. How do you think this is going to work together as they go forward? What are your expectations for the ceiling for that group? 
I don't think they have a ceiling long term, Rachel. And obviously, I'm biased. And, right. and those guys are super young. They're still college age players. Um, but Devin Booker is an elite closer, and I think you saw that last night. At, sure. at, at you know, having just turned 22 years old, man, man. Uh, he's as good as any <laughs> young player in the league in terms of closing out games down the stretch. Which, as you guys know, that's the hardest thing to find in the NBA. And then DeAndre Ayton, uh, I think he's averaging over 16 points, 10 rebounds, and three assists. Uh, only a few rookies in NBA history have ever done that, and none have done it uh, at 20 years old. So now it's, it's early, uh, it, but as you guys know, usually to win at a high level in the NBA, you need three elite players to build around, and I feel like they, the Suns have two young guys in Devin and DeAndre who will be elite young players, as you see DeAndre here out of the post. Um, you know, Devin Booker, the first three years of his career, never got that look right there where he could tee up a three and step into it. Right. Um, and so the, the, the two of them, together I think we'll have great chemistry and we'll form a dynamic offensive combination. Brian, I don't want to harp on the point guard situation too much, but I do want to harp on it a little bit. <laughs> um, when you look at you guys drafted T.J. Warren, who you eventually extended, you drafted Devin Booker, who you eventually extended, you drafted Josh Jackson, you just traded for Mikel Bridges in the draft. You go into free agency this summer. What is the thought process where you say, I know you needed a vet in the room. What is it you say, we need Trevor Reza, who is yet another wing rather than going after a guard, perhaps even Rondo, who's a guy that you knew from Boston. That's a good question to me. We, we studied the final four teams in the league last year, you know, the four in the conference finals. And then other than Cleveland with LeBron, if you look at Golden State, Houston, and Boston, they have a ton of interchangeable wing players. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times they'll have three or even four of them on the court at a time. Uh, so we looked at that. Um, you know, Ariza was an unrestricted free agent. Uh, he's a West Coast guy, as you guys know. Uh, he had an interest in coming to Phoenix. And we viewed his contract similar to how Philly viewed J.J. Reddick's contract a year ago, mm -hmm. where we can pay him, you know, a lot of money for one year, yeah. uh, keep our future flexibility. And, and that's you know, one thing I think we did well. The Suns are lined up pretty well for the 2019 free agent class in terms of their cap space and how they're positioned going forward. Um, so we thought Ariza would help us take a step from uh, rebuilding to hopefully being playoff competitive. And then we could build from there either with with Ariza or with an elite free agent in the 2019 class.